All right, we're gonna try this again. What's going on, y'all? This is your boy D Wheels, man. I'm out here. I've been trying to record this thing three or four times, so we're gonna try it again on the, on the YouTube recorder. Okay, all right, I'm gonna try to make it quick this time because I don't know. All right, so here you go. This is my reefer unit. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just showing you guys a few things and ones of y'all that's new to the business uh, who may just want to know a little something about it, okay? This is a Thermal King uh, Preston C600. Okay, it has the ability to go electric mode, hence the uh, generator, or regular diesel mode. Okay, I'm gonna start from the top this time. Okay, start from the top. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up right quick. Okay, open that up. I'm trying to stand here, hold it with my head a little bit because I don't want to put that prop rod up there. Okay, I'm gonna go in here uh, up top. You see the red up there? That's the coolant jug where all the coolant is. I, I really. Very real, rarely do I have to even go up there. Matter of fact, I don't, okay? Uh, so, we're not even gonna fool with that. We don't have to fool with anything behind that TK, the fan and all that. We don't have to fool with none of that stuff there. Okay, here, field filter. That is that is uh, the main field filter. There is a small field filter beside the uh, fuel tank up under the reef unit with a smaller screen in there. Okay, that's something you wanna keep an eye on, especially in the winter time. You wanna make sure so that thing will gel up quick if you don't have your winterizer in there, okay? So, here, here's the air filter, okay? Basically, these snaps right here, you snap, snap them down, so snap them down, uh, pull this off, pull the old filter out, pop the new one back in there, put that back on, close it down, okay? All part when you do your maintenance and everything, okay? I'm trying to go fast, I'm gonna close this back down. Bam, lock it back in place. All right, belts, of course you wanna, you wanna check your belts. You know what I'm saying? Every periodically, make sure they're good, make sure they're not cracked, but you know, like a pre trip. You know how y'all be saying crack, broke, afraid. <laughs> okay, yeah. So check your belts and pulleys, everything, make sure they feel good, got enough tension on them. Okay. Uh, here, up here, can you see? Okay, that right there. That right there is a water pump. That's the water pump. As you see, the hose, that's the hose coming down right there from the top of the coolant jug I just showed you up there. Okay, water pump. Um, just keep an eye on that right there. Uh, when the water pump, just like any other water pump, when it starts starts going bad, uh, coolant will start coming out of that uh, that little weep hole on the side. That's what it's there for. To let you know that one of the seals in there is failing and it's gonna go out soon. So you start seeing dripping coolant and like it's coming from the water pump and slinging coolant to the back of the engine or whatever, go ahead and get that changed before it breaks down on you on the road, okay? Uh, let's see here. Okay, oil filter. Oil filter, uh, uh, like pressure sensor, oil, oil pressure sensor, and all. If this sensor goes bad, it will show there's no oil in the, in the unit. It won't start. Or if it, if it goes bad while it's running, it may shut off. I hadn't had it happen to me on this unit, um, but my older one I used to have, it wouldn't even start if the if the uh, sensor was bad. Okay, because um, I think when it's when it goes through its immediate checks before it cranks up. It's, it, 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 it checks all the sensors, and so when it hit that sensor, and it's getting a uh, it's getting a reading before the engine even start, it's, it's saying that something something's wrong with the sensor. Okay, so there should be like no no like no reading at first, and then then it's looking for a reading. It's looking for a reading. So sometimes you can bypass that as long as you know everything else is working. If your sensor if your sensor goes bad on the road and it won't crank, especially on the older one, uh, you can unplug it. And as soon as it crank up, plug it back in because it's going to be looking for that um, that that continuous loop, which is going to give you because the sensor is bad. So it's going to give you that continuous loop, um, but it'll keep you from getting it cranked up. Okay, all right. So oil pressure sensor. I mean, uh, oil filter, uh, <coughs> starter, uh, starter solenoid, uh, like speed control. You got another speed uh, solenoid that, that get help gauge the RPMs. Um, this is your. Uh, your compressor. This is the main heart of the engine pretty much. This compressor. That's a sight glass for the refrigerant over there It's like a recovery like a recovery tank if that thing is low if that thing is low whatever um, It'll give you a code and sometimes it won't crank either when it goes through a system checks and that, that thing is too low Sometimes it won't crank either so you can just check. There's a sight glass There's a sight glass in a little bubble like a little bubble sight glass in there and that little, that little round ball that be in there that little ball we sit at the very bottom. It's showing it's, it's, it's low on cool. It's low on refrigerant. 
and uh, that that could be a problem. You can't fix it yourself. You gotta take it in and let them uh, charge your system back up. Okay, it normally shouldn't be going out unless you got a leak somewhere, but that's just what it is. Okay, alternator, alternator. Here's the alternator. We're up under. Here's the alternator. Remember, remember, I had to change that. I don't know if y'all saw the video or not. I didn't get into detail because it was too hard for me to do it and hold the phone. Okay, so that's the alternator. In order to change the alternator out, you have to remove the whole plastic panel on the bottom of the unit, about 10 screws. You have to move those and you get access to the bottom. Uh, keep notice of where your wires go. There are not too many of them. A couple of them that bolt on and one that plugs in. Uh, the other thing is, uh, there's also a uh, pulley, if I'm pointing to it, but you really can't see it. It's a little, you may be able to see it. It's a pulley back there. It's a little Allen head screw. It's an Allen head screw that has to be loosened up right in the center of that pulley. And you gotta use Allen wrenches like this, okay? You gotta use the ones like this here. To be in, being able to get in there and turn that screw. You can't use, as you see, you couldn't use it if it was long like this, you couldn't use it. It had to be one with a short tip and handle like that where you can get in there and do what you gotta do, okay? So, uh, I think I gave you a pretty good idea of, uh, you know, saying just what stuff is. Uh, again, oil, here's the, uh, like here to fill up my oil. This is where my oil will be right here. This is the plug if I want to do when I do my oil change. I just take that cap off the end. There's a uh, quick connect fitting in there. And that right there is the hose I had to buy from Thermal King that specially fits that quick connect fitting. That way, if you change the oil, you just click, you just click it on there and the hose and it just goes straight into your container. Very simple. Okay. Uh, uh, that's pretty much it. Like I said, and, unless you're going to do the, the, the maintenance yourself, if you do, you buy the kit. The kit will have the oil filter in it. And remember I showed you that fuel filter that was up there. It had the oil filter. It had the air I showed you. It had the air filter that I showed you. And it will have the, uh, let me open this back up just for clarity. It will have the air filter that goes in there. And it will have that filter right there. So you have all three of those things that come in the kit. Okay, if you're going to change it yourself. All right, so last but not least, I'm going to go back here again. This light right here. That light right there is for your uh, tire inflation system. If that light is on it, during your trip, you, you got an air leak somewhere back in the back in your tires, and it's losing air, it's coming back on to inflate your tires back up or whatever. Uh, but you see that light coming on, flickering on, going back on, flickering on. That means you got an air leak somewhere. Maybe you ran over a nail or whatever. If that light is constantly staying on, you might need, you might want to stop and get that fixed or whatever. Like I said, it, it's possible that it can keep enough air in it for you to make it across the trip. Um, but when it keeps coming back on, it's letting you know that it's losing air. So, um, again, it's not a great big emergency as long as it goes out every now and then and lets you, let you know that the, the compressor can't keep enough air in the tires. But if it's just constantly staying on, you might want to you might want to get that checked out, all right? So, okay, all right, y'all. I just want to make that quick video. Uh, if y'all have any, you know, questions or whatever, like I said, I'm not trying to get too, too technical, okay? Damn, phone ringing.